Everyone knows that Triceratops fought each other, right? What else were those horns for? Well, potentially defense. We've seen these largest of the horned dinosaurs use their horns all the time on the silver screen. But how true was this to life? We've seen it in movies, documentaries, and art precisely because it has long been one of the many hypotheses about how the Triceratops used its horns. Were they for display? Fighting amongst themselves? Or fighting off predators? Could it be all three and more? A new study takes a chunk out of the frill of one of the largest known Triceratops specimens to see if there was more to the frill than met the eye. In May of 2014, a specimen of a Triceratops was discovered in the badlands of a private ranch in Mud Butte, South Dakota. The remains were found by fossil hunter and seller Walter W. Stein, who was part of that whole Dino Hunter show which somehow got a second season and perhaps might get more. The remains of this Triceratops were rather complete but spread out over an area of 100 square meters. Stein and company found the bones on the surface that led into an outcrop, so excavation started by collecting the stuff on the surface, then excavating some of the hillside for the rest. It surprisingly only took a year to collect all the material, which was about 60% complete, with a 75% complete skull. The skeleton was excavated on private land, so is owned by the owners of the land. The whole team involved report that the skeleton is 5-10% to larger than any other known Triceratops, which, if true, makes it a record breaker. It was nicknamed Big John after one of the ranch owners. The bones were bought for 150,000 euros, then shipped to a fossil workshop in Trieste, Italy, where they were further prepared, casts were made, and missing bones were added in to create a full amount. This process began in January of 2021. The skull went on display in February, then the whole finished thing from July to August before being sold again at auction on October 21st, 2021 for a whopping 6.6 .6 million euros, 7.7 .7 million USD, making it the highest non-Tyrannosaurus specimen ever sold, and adding another skeleton to the pile of specimens that are ramping up the prices for dinosaur specimens. First it was Sue, then an Allosaurus in Paris a sauropod, a stegosaur, then Stan, the dueling dinosaurs, and now a triceratops. Walter Stein, the guy who found and helped recover the specimen, said, I would have felt better about it had it gone to a museum. Hopefully the new owner will put it on public display somewhere soon so others can love the specimen like we did. I won't make this video specifically also about the unethicality of selling dinosaur specimens, especially those that may be important like this one, but public display is only one aspect of a dinosaur specimen and kind of the least important one. Of course, the public has a right to see these specimens, admire them and learn from them, but they are also extremely important to our greater understanding of the fossil record and each specimen acts as a whole new data point to add to analyses on these animals. At some point, one of the owners of the specimen allowed a histological sample of Big John to be made, which is now housed at the University Museum of Chieti in Chieti, Italy. So that was cool of them. Would have been cooler to donate it to a museum and get, like, a ton of social accolades, uh, but whatever, keep it in your house so only you can enjoy it. That's totally cool too. A team of researchers, including Ruggero de Anastasio, Jacopo Siei, Flavio Baccia, Federico Fanti, Giacomo Gobo, and Luigi Caposo, took a look at the sample and published their findings. Histology is the study of microscopic tissues of living or once living things. The process for analyzing the histology of an organism is simple. You need a microscope thin slice of the subject. For living tissues, you encase it in something like resin or wax, then slice till you have your chip. For fossils, you slice a chip with a rock saw, then polish till it is at the point you need it. Glue to glass slide and place under scope. Run it through a few different wavelengths of light and report what you find. It's a great way to rigorously observe and record age, diet, season, illness, and injury data, as well as some other cool stuff. In the case of Big John, it has a hole in its frill. 
This isn't unusual for most ceratopsians, but Triceratops is the only known to have had a solid frill. Any holes that are seen in this specific genus or anything closely related is unusual and most likely a result of injury, illness, or deformity. The researchers cut a small chunk out of the rim of the puncture hole in the right side of the frill to see what was happening on a microscopic scale to this whole area. In most animals, a traumatic event, like a broken bone, will show itself in the bone as the bone remodels itself and heals. In modern reptiles and mammals, this occurs as the bone-growing cells activate and start making soft calluses rich in pro-collagen before calcifying to hard bone. The composition and distribution of the different cells and elements during this process leave their mark in the bone, which can then be preserved in the fossil. The outside surface of the bone around the keyhole-shaped hole is characterized by irregular plaque-like depositions of what is called reactive bone. Reactive bone, as the name suggests, is new bone growth after trauma. It's a special kind of bone that is more active in its formation and reaction than other types of bone. This bone texture on Big John could be the result of periostitis, which is a type of inflammatory process triggered by any one or many different types of stimuli. Part of the weird, chunky, uneven texture around the hole is definitely from erosion and the fossilization process. But as we'll see with the histological analysis, some of it is definitely due to injury. The thin sections, when placed under the scope and through different wavelengths of light, showed that the tissue was well vascularized. Lots of blood vessels fed into this bone. When the researchers increased the magnification to 400x, they found that the border of the tissue showed areas of bone resorption. They found that parts of the bone had been eroded due to the activity of osteoclasts, which is a type of bone cell that breaks down bone. Farther away from the hole, the bone becomes less vascularized and more compact. The analysis was broken into macroscopic and microscopic analyses. Macroscopically, we've seen that the bone shows telltale signs of damage. Microscopically, the bone shows direct evidence of damage and bone remodeling, with bone being eaten away, resorbed, and new bone being laid down. What does this mean? It means the animal was involved in a traumatic event that left it with a hole in its frill, a hole that was actively in the process of healing when Big John died. This excludes the possibility that the hole was made after death since the bone was still being remodeled. Another possibility this rules out is that the hole was a mutation from birth. How did it happen? Ceratopsian expert Dr. Andrew Fark hypothesized three models of ceratopsian on ceratopsian action that may have resulted in injuries. This one is the single horn contact position. This happens when only one of the brow horns is in contact between the combatants. In this scenario, lesions are inflicted on this part of the frill by the nose horn. The second model is the oblique horn locking position. This happens when the skulls come into contact with one another when both are slightly rotated with respect to one another. In this scenario, contact occurs between both brow horns. This may result in the nose horn gouging both this part and this part of the frill. The third model is the full horn locking position. This one is when both combatants have their skulls locked together at a 45 degree angle with respect to the horizontal. The lesion seen in Big John doesn't match any of these three models. The models aren't meant to be all-inclusive, but were created to help explain the major lesions seen in many Ceratopsian skulls. Other possibilities exist, but are rare, and this is one of those rare alternative occurrences. The research team on Big John's mysterious hole suggested that it was gouged from behind, that another Triceratops punctured a hole into John's frill and then slipped towards John's beak, making the keyhole-like shape. It remains a possibility that the injury was much worse when it was first inflicted and that Big John healed enough after the event for only a keyhole-shaped hole to remain when he died. It's impossible to know for certain how long the period of time was between injury and death, though bone remodeling in living animals usually starts three to four weeks post-injury. Of course, even here there's a lot of gray wiggle room since the time varies between species, genera, and family of animals. The researchers roughly estimate that Big John may have died around six months after the event, given how long that process can take in modern animals. 
and stretching that out due to how big a triceratops is. Not that we needed any more evidence that suggests the horned dinosaurs fought one another, but this analysis adds to the pile of direct evidence of such encounters. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Ray, Isaiah Garza, Dinosaur, Christoph Hubbinger, Biotiverse, and Arda Bayer. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons The Dogman, Iron Bladesman, Danny Van Heck, and Dana Manchester.